This is the first video in the geometry series. In this video, we're just going to go over some basic definitions that you need to know and you need to be able to recognize in order to do some of the more advanced geometry problems that you'll find on the SAT. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some basic terms and things to remember uh, that we're going to be using in later uh, parts of this section. So first things first, your coordinate axes. And I think I've mentioned these a little bit earlier. We've seen these before, but we should review how they work. This here is your x-axis. This here is your y-axis. It's usually given uh, little tick marks here. Usually use graph paper. We don't have that here, but each one of these tick marks denote, you know, one unit. So this is one, two, three. To the right is positive. To the left is negative. Up is positive for the y, and down is negative for the y. And you can almost imagine. You can think about. Oops, sorry. Negative four, negative three, negative two. You can think back to the number lines uh, video I did, if you watch that one. And this is just two number lines that are intersecting each other. Uh, this is your origin. It's usually labeled with an O. It's your origin. And it's your point, 0, 0. Now again, to get a point, we just say, OK, let's say the point 2, 1. Well, that would just be 1, 2 for the x, 1 for the y. There's your point, And it would be labeled 2, 1. But anyway, so O is your origin. That's just your, you know, your your starting point where this axis uh, starts from. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, da -da -dun -dun. So let's imagine we had two lines, like this. What can we say about those lines? Well, let's call this line L and line M. Well, we know it goes through a number of points. So for instance, this line goes through point zero, or sorry, negative three zero, and something pretty close to you know three and a half zero. This line goes through two zero and you know approximately negative or zero negative two point five. So we can kind of point out the line, the points that this line goes through. And as we'll talk about when we talk about lines, uh, two points, two distinct points make a line. If these lines are parallel, which they look to be in this case, we would label that with this symbol. L is parallel, so this is parallel to M. And that means they never intersect uh, anywhere. Even if we extend these lines infinitely in both directions, they're never going to touch, never going to intersect. All right, some other notation we might need to know. Let's say we're given this, AB with double arrows. That just means line AB. So in this case, actually, maybe this is point A and this is point B. This would be line AB. You can actually extend this like this. Uh, if we had a b with a line on top with only one arrowhead, that would be array a b. An array is just something like this. You've got a terminating point right here. It goes forever in this direction, and you got some point b right here. So that is array. Uh, you're not going to see this notation too much on the SAT, but just in case, it is good to know. Uh, a b with just a line, no arrowheads, is segment a b, and that would look something like this. And this is just a standard line segment. And you will see this uh, more often. If it's just AB with no line on it, it's the length of segment AB. So looking at this guy, let's say he had a length of 6. AB would equal 6 in this case, because his length is 6 units or 6, you know, whatever. Let's see. Um, and again, with these, we can we can flip these all you know, constantly. We can say this is line BA with no damage. We can say, well, we can't really flip this because if we flip the ray and make it ray BA, that would be something like this, right? Because you're talking about the terminating point of B, um, and it's going through A. But anyway, you don't really need to worry about rays as much. They don't come up often. If you've got this, this is just a symbol for an angle, A, B, C. So that would be something like this. We could also call this angle C, B, A, just reversing the other direction. We can't necessarily, however, I mean, we could, depending on the context, call this angle B. The problem with that is that uh, there could be, say, another angle like that. And which one would you call angle B? Let's call that D, right? We'd have to differentiate between this angle here and this angle. So we have to use A, B, C versus D, B, A or ABD, CBA, stuff like that. Uh, you can't have angle AB as well. You need to have at least three letters, or, well, you have to have three letters, just because, again, AB, well, is it going to be this angle, which includes AB, or this angle, which includes AB? So you can't do that. Um, if you see a little M, measure of ABC, this stands for measure. 
And it just means just like with the length of the segment, you just want the number of degrees in the angle. So in this case, if this degree was 30, measure of ABC would be 30 degrees. Uh, if you are given this symbol, you might expect it's a triangle, and indeed it is. Triangle ABC would look you know, something like this. Uh, if you're given four letters, say A, B, C, D, sometimes it'll be a little quadrilateral symbol, sometimes not, but this is the symbol for quadrilateral. Now, the thing with this is you can't really draw this unless you're, until you're given more information. So this could be a rectangle, it could be a quadrilateral, it could be a square, it could be a rhombus, right? Any, or a trapezoid, uh, no. uh -huh, like that. Right? It could be a lot of different kind of quadrilaterals, but you're not going to know until they give you either some length information, or they show you a picture, or they give you some angle information. Finally, the other symbol I want to point out is perpendicular. So let's say we have two segments, like this, AB, CD, and they form a right angle. We can then say that segment AB is perpendicular to, so this is the symbol for perpendicular, uh, segment CD. And that perpendicular just means forms right angles, and all of these would then be right angles. And that is pretty much it. Well, actually, no, let me talk about points and lines. Let me not leave this part out. So, these are the definitions we need to know uh, for uh, a lot of the geometry stuff, but I want to zoom in a little bit more on points and lines, and this is going to overlap a bit with what I talked about in the, li in the number line section. But anyway, as I mentioned earlier, a line is anything that contains two distinct points. So in this case, this line would be line AB, as we talked about above. I couldn't talk about something, for instance, like line B, because we don't know what direction this is going in, right? It could go this way, this way, this way. We know it goes through B but we don't know what direction it's going. We need a second point such as this, A, to tell us, oh, okay, it's this line. Now, a um, couple things. We could talk about line segments as well. So let's say we have this point, a, this line segment AB. The midpoint, as you might expect, is the point that's right in the middle that divides these two segments into two equal parts. Um, so that in this case we would know if M is a midpoint of AB, we would know then that AM is equal to MB. Or probably more appropriately I could do, or congruent. Oh, that's probably something to point out. This is a symbol for congruent. I don't think you'll see that on the test, but uh, just in case, congruent. And that means equal, essentially, in geometry terms. So in this case, AM would be congruent to MB, or the measure of AM would be equal to the magnitude or measure of MB. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else. I mean... Beyond this, it's just regular line segment stuff and number line stuff. If you are told that AC is 2 and CB is 4, then AB would just be the sum of 2 and 4, which is 6, right? I think this is pretty uh, basic and normal stuff. So that's all I have to say about points and line segments and these definitions. In the next videos, we're going to develop these further so that we can actually tackle SAT problems.